Well, hello everyone and welcome to the channel for this episode 25 of the 200 horsepower challenge with me farmer murphy well i have jumped ahead a couple months and as i feared uh, all our root crops are ready to be harvested at the same time um, so i have purchased our two potato harvesters already they're sitting up at the store and actually uh, we are going to upgrade one of our tractors so i am going to go and grab that and i will meet you up at the store because we are going to purchase another warrior just identical to the one we bought last time and i will update you uh, on everything that's happened in the last couple of months while we're harvesting just to save some time so uh, i will meet you up at the store though for that tractor upgrade see you then well, this is the tractor we're going to upgrade. Um, it's been a good machine for us, but it's got like 45 hours on it already. And we're going to upgrade it um, and replace it with a uh, Deutz again. Um, basically identical. I'll have to come back and pick up that weight. Identical uh, to the last new Deutz, the Black Warrior we bought. So and we're going to add one more tractor so i'm going to get that done and i will bring you back in and we'll talk a little bit about these potato harvesters right here so again i will see you in a moment with some more new equipment well there that's how you spend five hundred thousand, just like that <laughs> three hundred thousand on our potato harvesters and uh a little over two hundred thousand on new tractors of course but we we traded one in so this is an exact copy of the last Deutz warrior we bought in matte black the only difference is this one has crop sensors on it because the tractor we sold had the sensors on it was the one i had done the fertilizing with so obviously we'll be using that tractor now and i bought this one um, to take over the field work that we were doing with our yard tractor and take over the bucket work. We don't do a lot of bucket work, but uh, I didn't want to have a bucket on one of these large tractors. So I wanted a smaller one for that. And there were a couple times when I had all four tractors going in the field and I had some yard work I could have done. So our, our bureau is going to stay in the yard, just do yard work and the field work uh, uh, like with some mulching it did and uh, um, tedding there that's the word I was looking for those kind of things that we did with that in the field this tractor will do that and of course our bucket work so the only other thing I want to talk to you about while we're up here and then we'll get set up and going on that potato harvest is these potato harvesters here uh, something I didn't notice before if we go in here in the store According to this, it will not only do potatoes, but it'll do carrots, parsnips, and beets as well. So if that is the case, that's some good news because this is a two-row harvester. Our other uh, vegetable harvesters are single-row harvesters, and that means we'll be able to sell them off. So we'll give that a test right at the end of the episode, and I'll let you know if that's true or not. But I'm going to get set up. To do that potato harvest so i'm going to get everything moved to the field and we'll get after that harvest and while we're doing that then i'll bring you up to speed on everything else that's happened in the meantime so we'll see you down at the field well there we are in full swing here in the potato harvest i just got the workers going uh, before i started them on the other side you'll see there's quite a bit more done that's because i did a few rows by hand because of those trees and rocks you can see over there uh, so I did those first few rows just so I didn't have to so our worker didn't have to deal with them or I didn't have to make a head lift. now you notice one of the advantages of these harvesters over our other uh, vegetable harvesters we can unload these on the go so that's going to be a real advantage if we uh, actually can harvest our other root crops with them Now I do have crop destruction turned off because in all likelihood at some point I will have to run over the crops in order to get these guys unloaded. Now our uh, trailer will only be able to unload each harvester one time and then we'll be full. And uh, 
So this is where it would be nice to have a larger trailer, but our soup factory is right there. And uh, I think we, we would struggle with uh, a, a much larger trailer load of potatoes than this. Oh, we didn't catch that guy before he turned. So this is one of those instances where we're going to need to unload him <laughs> by driving on the crop. But uh, don't have time to, uh, you know, stop him, take over, spin around, unload, and restart him. We'll just, just close your eyes if you're a purist. <laughs> He didn't do a very good even row there for some reason. trailer full here right away. That is an advantage boy being able to run along with them. Oh, that's close enough. Oh looks like it didn't do quite enough. He stopped up short so I'll have to fix that up. So while that is dumping, let's take a look what we have for extra vegetables now um, because we've got all our other uh, crops ready to harvest as well. So we have 56,000 liters of carrots, 42,000 liters of parsnips, almost 43, and 25,000 liters of red beet. Now, if I remember the calculation I did is the soup factory of the individual uh, vegetable soups can process 43,000 liters, I believe it was, uh, in a month. So we have enough extra vegetables in one harvest to run for one month on everything except red beet. So that's why I was thinking it wouldn't be a bad thing if we had another small red beet patch just so that uh, every harvest we could run one uh, month of uh, just individual soups. Take a look here. Did he go all the way down that time? No, it looks like he stopped short again. Okay, so the next time I do this, I'll, I'll uh, take a little larger swing at it there. He's still seeing a collision with this uh, stuff here. So, um, now, when I left you last, we had the $300,000 for our harvesters. So that nearly 300,000 that we had on top of that came from largely our barley. I had taken all but, I think we have 23,000 liters or something like that sitting in our silo for our chickens. And the rest I turned into seed. And that's been selling on the top of the hour. I think there's only like 9,000 liters left. So that's where a lot of our money came from. Of course, we had the uh, sale of our milk and eggs and our soup uh, factory also contributed. But that's where that uh, money came from. The grass has been fermented into silage, but it's still sitting in our fermenting silo because we didn't need it. I just left it sit there till we can get a, uh, a better price for it. So now regarding the tractor upgrades, um, it's funny, I, I was just watching uh, Farmer Mike who's uh, um, doing this challenge as well on this map. Pretty good content I must admit, he's actually linked below, I encourage you to go check him out. 
but in his last episode he had just said that he was buying different tractors because it was boring you know to have all the same tractors and I'm doing just the opposite I'm doing exactly the same tractors actually you know what we're gonna risk that 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 guy should be able to get down there and turn around so we don't have to do it on the crop um, yes yeah, so and I wouldn't normally do that on my uh, playthroughs even on just for fun I usually do pick a brand and stick with it on the farm because around here at least in Alberta that's what farmers do you'll find that they you know they're a John Deere farm or case farm I may not be hundred percent exclusive that type of equipment but a lot of it is and that's strictly from maintenance and uh, purposes because you know most of them do their own work I would imagine anyway and so they have to have oil filters fuel filters you know belts that sort of thing and if they have all uh, similar equipment it would help reduce the uh, you know the amount of parts they need to have or different parts they need to have on hand but anyways as I was saying I, I would normally like run three Deutsch tractors in this case but they'd all probably be different horsepowers but we are limited in what we can have for horsepower here on the farm and we have upgraded all our equipment to uh, as large as possible that uh, we can pull with the horsepower we have so um, it just makes sense to have tractors of all the same size I was originally thinking of getting one just the same horsepower but in the warrior kind of livery but I realized it was far made far more sense for us to have three tractors that could pull every implement on the farm uh, rather than just two because I had to do some uh, tractor dancing as they say <laughs> moving things around uh, because uh, that other Deutz couldn't pull everything so that's why we're going to end up actually with three of these warriors that was kind of a, a goal I had set uh, as you may recall early on to have a fleet of warrior tractors so uh, I will be upgrading our other older Deutz to one of these as well at some point in the future before we leave and I already explained why I bought the older Deutz is just to have that fourth field tractor that we can use for the smaller jobs because there are a few still like tedding and mulching that we can use a smaller tractor for and I wanted to always have the yard tractor available so I could uh, when I had workers going doing those things I could still do yard work so that brings us up to speed on that um, now, I did move 10 of our cows out of our uh, cow pen we can see across there, our original one. They were ready to give uh, birth, so I moved them up to the upper pen. Um, it seems to be working now, um, the manure. Oh, I guess I should go dump this, or I'll be sorry. So I just moved the 10 that were just about ready to give birth. Um, I think they five for sure will be next month so they're up there so we'll have some uh, additional animals on the farm here shortly and I think that is everything I needed to bring you up to speed on talked about fertilizer and seed production the cows um, selling the milk and the eggs I think I think you're caught up and where the money came from for the tractors and why we're doing all the same tractors I'm sure my farmer Mike he when he said that it was kind of boring to have three of the same tractors um, he didn't mean these Deutz warriors I'm, I'm sure there's an exception to that rule for these Hopefully he comes all the way down now and he's going to be happy. We'll catch this guy up. So what time is it? We're at 7 o'clock. This potato harvest is growing reasonably fast. 
And if we can use these on the vegetables, man, that'll really speed the vegetable harvest up because they, oh yeah, look at that. They hold twice as much as our vegetable harvesters and we can unload these on the run too. So I still haven't decided yet if I'm going to buy that field in front of us and do a little bit of corn and some additional beets. Still need to make that decision. I definitely want to run the series until um, we get one more vegetable harvest in, so we have uh, one you know, and, and another potato harvest, I should say, to do. Oh, that's something I forgot to do. I forgot to do the calculation of how many uh, potatoes our soup factory can process. I'll have to pause at some point and do that because I'd like to hold back, we need to hold back about 15,000 liters of potatoes for seed potatoes, if we could. So I can't forget about that because I we, once we throw them into the soup factory, man, we can't get them back out of there. What we might do here, so we used about one and a half, uh, we filled our planter I should say about one and a half times. We'll take this to 15,000, we'll, we'll throw this in our silo and then we'll have it. Oh look at that, that would go perfect. And uh, then if we actually needed to make soup we decided we want to do that because soup is a lot more valuable than, than buying uh, potatoes for seed. But this way I won't forget. <coughs> we might... Ooh, I forgot to put the beige interior on this one. Yeah, that won't do. We will have to do that. I really like that beige interior versus the gray. I hadn't noticed that. So not only do we need to get these fields harvested, but then we need to turn them around. But uh, the speed at which this potato harvest is going, I'm not too concerned about that. Because that's all we have to do this month. There's no other harvest work that needs to be done or grass work. Look at that farmer Murphy left the barn doors open again. He's just asking for his cows to run away. What a guy. My my my. What what well-trained cows that they stay in the barn with the barn doors wide open. Amazing. <laughs> there. Now we have our seed potatoes. As long as we don't need them for our soup factory. Oh, well, see, we got a little kiss of money there again. That's the the last of our, or got to be pretty close to the last of our uh, barley. I do have manure and slurry in there ready to be processed into fertilizer. I was just waiting for the seed to be done because uh, it uses or needs the manure as well. So uh, once the the barley is done, then we'll uh, are done being processed. The seed, I should say, we'll we'll turn the fertilizer on because uh, no, I don't know if I mentioned that, but I do have. I did stock up our fertilizer and seeds. We have just under 20,000 liters of each in our silo, so uh, we should be good there. Now, I'm not sure who's closest to being full now. I kind of lost track with all that talking. Here, look how much of that field we've gotten done already. Can you imagine how fast those vegetable fields are going to go with these harvesters if they do work? That's one nice thing about not running seasons because we can just take the crop out and put it back in. 
we only need enough potatoes to run the uh, factory for, I should have counted, four months, five months, I think it was. Um, not an entire year. Well, I picked wrong. It's the other guy that's just to go for. Now, doesn't that look sweet? Some options slightly different because it's got an extra, unless it's the crop sensors that put the extra piece on. Because we've got two uh, antennas of some sort on the top of this one versus one on the other. Having the extra uh, speed on these Deutzes is nice too. I can't say that it really bothers me to do these root crops like this. It doesn't take all that long. It's definitely a good way to do it. When you think about it, we're doing four rows at a time, which is the same as the large potato harvester. There's no downtime for carton in this situation, that's for sure. quite half done, but we're getting awfully close, I would say. Oh, no, maybe not. 25% done anyways. I should check the time. Oh, yeah. We've been yabbering away here for a while. So what I'll do is I will leave you there, I think, because um, I do want to test these out on the vegetable crops before we leave. Now, I'm up against a uh, time deadline here in real life, but I'm hoping I can get this potato field completely finished so I can let you know what we got off of it and then do the vegetable. But if I do hit that deadline, um, I may have to pause this and just run over with one harvester and I'll have to catch up on the potatoes next episode. But either way, I will see you, well, shortly for you and in a little while for me. So, catch up with you in a bit. Well, you can see the potato harvest is not done. We have a bit of a situation, but it's a good situation. With the potatoes I have in the trailer now, we will have enough potatoes in our soup factory 
to run for the five months that we need. So that potato that's left in the field, we can sell. So we'll dump this in here and we will get it kicked off. So we needed, uh, I calculated about 220,000 to run for the five months. This will actually take, whoops, take us to 225,000 or very close to it as you can see. And we can actually turn all of these on because we're going to have the other uh, harvest going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let those guys uh, finish and fill up and I will stop and I'll empty them and we'll leave the potato harvest for now because I'm going to have to start carting this up to our silo. So uh, that's going to take uh, slow this process down a little bit and as I mentioned earlier I have a time limit here for recording today. So once they're emptied up, emptied out I should say, I will get them set up on our vegetable fields and we'll see if they work over there. So once we're ready to do that test, I will bring you back in. So we'll see you in just a couple minutes. Well, I am recording this for the second time because I didn't do a game save like I should have just before I started recording and I got a phone call come blasting through. So you can see I have one unit set up here on one field and the other unit set up on the other field here and the reason I did that my thinking was that because we were doing two rows at a time um, that with the workers both workers running on the same field uh, that they would interfere with each other uh, rather quickly so I thought it might be more efficient to do this oh and before we carry on, I shouldn't mention that we are one hour into that potato harvest on the other field. So we have about a half hour left, I would estimate. And we'll probably have close to 100,000 liters of potatoes to sell. But now, getting back to our, our vegetable harvest here. Well, you can see that it did harvest a little bit of parsnip here. And if we run over here... you can see we harvested a little bit of carrot but we are not without issues let me show you so we'll fire this up like i said i had recorded uh, from the start the darn phone call came in and i didn't think i could edit it out but if we go see harvesting no problem at all but here's the issue let's hire a worker bang not good and if we go over here, we'll find it's exactly the same thing over here. And if we go to hire a worker, I mean, we can harvest okay. Uh, let's back this up here a little bit. Turn it on, drop it down. And it certainly will harvest the parsnips, no problem at all. But I go to hire a worker. No, sir. So, that leads us to, I can either do it two rows at a time by myself with one harvester, or I can do use two workers and do it two rows at a time with the workers like I did last time. So, I don't know what I'll do just yet. So, I've got to make a decision on that. That's kind of unfortunate. Um... What I might do is try doing one field here just on my own, see how long it takes uh, and kind of compare that uh, go back and look at what how long it took with uh, doing the two workers and uh, decide from there. But that's a little disappointing. But uh, I was planning on showing some of this, so I think we're going to end up being a little bit short on time. So it might be a slightly shorter episode. But I think I will leave you there because I'm going to go back. I'll take these few little bits I've harvested and put them in the uh, soup factory. Then I'll go back and carry on on that potato harvest over there and get it finished. Um, but I'm kind of getting really close to being out of time here in real life. So I think we'll just leave it there. I'll carry on and get the potato harvest done. And I'll let you know how I ended up doing the vegetable harvest. Uh, just uh, 
at the start of the next episode. So if you're still with me, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, if you want to know when other content like this lands, hit that old notification bell. Uh, but for this little bit shorter episode here on uh, Comlands, it's Farmer Murphy signing off.